Hello there and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Upari. In today's video, we're going to be painting a portrait of a very special bearded dragon, my bearded dragon, Pepper. And I'm going to keep a photo reference of Pepper to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to the image as the painting develops. So I'll read off the palette for you. Uh, starting from the top left, I'm using titanium white, uh, mixing white, burnt umber, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. And I'm working on an 11 by 14 inch cotton canvas panel. Now, uh, some of you might already have caught on. So I'm using water mixable oil paints yet again today. In yesterday's video, I experimented a little bit with the water mixables and I thought I might as well give it another go today. So I'm gonna be using the, uh, the very traditional umber sketch technique. And very quickly, we already have an idea of pretty much the entire composition. Now, one of the most wonderful things about uh, painting animals, uh, you know, pet portraits and all of that is that you can really go wild with the compositions. Uh, you know, animals tend to have different types of gestures. So that right there was the center line. So even though we're drawing a, um, you know, a reptile, uh, an animal, we can still use the figure drawing techniques that we have when we're drawing, you know, standard human poses. That is having simple straight lines and angles and a center line giving the uh, general dynamic movement of the pose. So it is in a way a figure drawing of a very dynamic pose. There's a lot of motion going on. So what you're seeing is actually a uh, pepper in her enclosure. So those of you that keep uh, bearded dragons or reptiles in general know that their care is a little more intricate than that of a house cat or you know like a like a like a dog or something uh, because these these reptiles bearded dragons in particular along with iguanas and uh, tegus and all of those other animals they are uh, cold-blooded now that means that they need they rely on their environment to regulate their temperatures their metabolism and all of that so i am going to talk a little bit about uh, the bearded dragons because i love animals again those of you that have met me know that pretty much the only thing that parallels my uh, fascination for art is my fascination for animals that being said in the uh, painting right now what we have is a very basic shape established for the proportions of the uh, bearded dragon we have a very simple proportion for the head we have a center line for the body we have basic shapes for the arms the legs and the idea with water mixables, so I got a lot of stuff to talk about today. And again, I'm going to try to keep these episodes at around 30 minutes. So I'm going to edit them to be 30 minutes because I really want to present you with uh, things that I'm very passionate about. And to me, um, I think that it's really important to, you know, give you that sense of honesty. So again, uh, very simple, basic shape there. We have the beard. Uh, so we have a, a spot for the bearded dragon's eye. We have a spot for the bearded dragon's ear. Yes, the bearded dragon does have an ear. Well, kind of. It has the little hole there that you're seeing there um, where it takes in um, audio information from the outside world. And I shall say this now. It's only about four minutes into the video. I am not an expert when it comes to animals. I have done a lot of research on bearded dragons, so I would consider myself uh, much more advanced in the care and husbandry of bearded dragons. So I will talk, you know, about their, um, just about them, okay, <laughs> along with the uh, painting footage, because, you know, I don't want to present you with the same kind of boring thing all the time. Not that my, well, not all of my content is going to be like, you know, tutorial this, tutorial that. Like, oftentimes I really want to provide you with more information. I really want these videos to inspire education, positivity, and relaxation. So now what we're doing is we're mixing up the cadmium orange with the uh, yellow ochre and the cadmium yellow. And as it gets darker, we're putting in the alizarin crimson. Remember, alizarin crimson is a very nice and dark red. And then we're transitioning into the burnt sienna and then finally down into the burnt umber. 
So what I'm doing very similarly uh, to what you'd see me do uh, with a standard portrait is I'm mixing up a color value web. And the way that I'm going to attack this painting, the way that I'm <laughs> going to approach this painting um, is to basically uh, spot render each area. So I am going to paint this uh, portrait rather quickly. So I'm going in value for value, shape for shape, but at the same time I'm focused on the anatomy of my bearded dragon. So the beak, so the mouth of the bearded dragon, notice they're very similar to birds. So their mouth is kind of like a beak. So the beak has to be very, uh, I'd say more of an overbite than an underbite. Because if I give my bearded dragon an underbite, then it may be a sign of uh, metabolic bone disease. And again, I'm not an expert in, uh, okay, I'm not an expert with animals, but I do know that the beak, the sharpness of the beak of the uh, bearded dragon is gonna be very important. And I know my lizard is healthy. In fact, my lizard is running around in the background right now as I'm uh, doing this voiceover. I know my dragon is healthy. So uh, that is the beak has to be more of an overbite than an underbite. The eye has to be pretty darn centered. It can't be droopy. If I give my lizard a droopy eye, again, it's a sign of poor health. I have a healthy lizard. I take care of my animals. So I know that... <laughs> my dragon doesn't have a droopy eye or an underbite. So very much like uh, when you're painting a portrait of a human being, uh, when you're painting a uh, you know, portrait of a tiger, a lion, a zebra, or something like that, uh, whatever it may be, hopefully we get some images of uh, tigers, lions, zebras, and all that stuff, that would be awesome. So it's important to have some kind of understanding, I think, of the, um, you know, of their anatomy. And you don't need to know as much anatomy, I don't think, because, uh, you know, I, I will admit that I think that it's more acceptable to have a more expressive look, a more, um, you know, should I say a more artsy, quotation marks, artsy look when you're painting, uh, you know, pictures of, of reptiles or animals or something like that. I think that kind of lends itself more to that. But at the same time, it's important to understand, uh, you know, the structures involved. So now what I'm actually going to do, what you're seeing me do, is mix up the ultramarine blue and the ivory black with the mixing white and with a little bit of water. Uh, so you won't really see the water off screen. So this is water mixable oil paint. Notice how it's kind of already dripping on the uh, one side of the palette. So I tend to um, put in quite a lot of the water to thin out the paint. And one thing that I've noticed with the, uh, the water mixables that I'm using, and uh, if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box down below. And I'll have all that information typed up for you. And I apologize for yesterday. Yesterday I had a typo, <laughs> a big typo. I uh, put in the wrong uh, paint tubes. So yeah, I apologize for that if you noticed that in yesterday's video. But um, hopefully uh, in today's video I have the right materials on there. In any case, I'm using quite a bit of water with the background and with the initial layers. Um, but in particular with the background, just because I like the effect that you get with water mixables. It's almost like, um, should I say like an acrylic wash or um, dare I say even very similar to that of a, what I would think a watercolor mark would look like. It's really, really cool. The effects you can get out of water mixable oil paints. And so again, um, we're working with simple shape. Now you're seeing these basic planes that I'm starting to create. We already have the uh, uh, Pepper's beak. We have her eyes. And even the eyes, if the eyes are a little bit too bulgy or sunken in, could also be a sign of poor health with bearded dragons. So what you have is a very stout and healthy looking lizard in the top left corner of your screen. So I'm doing the best that I can to do justice to my lizard. And uh, I will say that um, it is difficult to paint portraits of people you know. And in particular, if the picture is your screensaver. <laughs> so uh, this picture of Pepper is actually my screensaver on my broken phone. 
Um, but anyway, I do have quite a lot of, <laughs> I've spent quite a lot of time looking at that photo reference. So I think that that also does help me move a little bit faster. And just like I've been mentioning before, I'm trying to keep these um, these videos at about 30 minutes, just so it's it's something digestible that uh, more of you can sit down and watch, you know, while you're, I don't know, while you're at home in the living room or, or whatever it may be. I'm really trying to add a little more stability to the time frames of each of these videos. And at the same time, you know, I'm trying to provide more creative content one thing I like to think about creativity is, uh, I don't know if this is a quote of anyone, so if someone already said this in the past, um, uh, that's their quote. You know, I'm not trying to say this is my quote. But I was thinking about something interesting. Uh, creativity, how do you be creative? Well, if you're doing what everyone else is doing, then you're probably doing it wrong. That's what I think about in terms of creativity. And so for me, I really want to explore technique. So notice how I'm mixing up another darker color. Uh, at some point I'm going to do a little bit of a magic trick where the background will be painted really quickly, but don't worry, that will come a little bit later on. <laughs> but again, I think it's important to explore various techniques, various different approaches, and various different subject matter. So what's the plural of subject matter? subject matters. I don't know. But it, I think it's important to explore. Always be exploring. You know, don't get complacent with one thing just because it works. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a close-up shot, so you won't actually see the mixtures uh, while we're in close-up, but you should have had a pretty good understanding of, you know, at least what the light planes are. Basically, uh, cadmium yellow medium, and uh, the side planes are uh, a little bit of alizarin crimson, some burnt sienna, and some cadmium orange. Now, if you'll notice, I kind of exaggerated the blue in the shadow. Notice how in the photo reference, Pepper has a warm light and a cool light. Uh, that is because bearded dragons, they require specific lighting. So Pepper is in her basking spot, which is a heat lamp, a heat lamp that keeps her temperature at about uh, the... Basking spot is about 100, and uh, I think it's just 100 or 101 degrees Fahrenheit. They need that to regulate their temperatures, but they also need a UVB light that emits a really, really cool color, very blue-ish color, and that's where that bluish color and that little dot that I painted in, by the way, is Pepper's nose. Yes, they do have a nose, a nostril, nostrils. Now, um, yes, so there is a cool light and there is a warm light. So there is double lighting going on. So that's why I used the uh, ultramarine blue. I will say, however, um, the ultramarine blue with the uh, Winsor Newton water mixable that I have is not that strong. So I do want to get, um, I don't know if I can find like a, a teal, something that's close to my cobalt teal color that I have in traditional oils. And we'll get that, but I'm very impressed with the quality of the colors of these water mixables. You know, I talked about it a lot yesterday, but I think that is really good. Um, so another thing about Pepper, her eyes are really, really dark. So um, with Bearded Dragons, you have very different um, variations of them. So Pepper happens to be, uh, you know, she has been bred to have the colors that she has, that orangey color and the dark eyes. And, you know, I won't get into too many specifics about it, but leather, <laughs> Pepper, excuse me, is a very, very <laughs> awesome looking lizard. You know, especially if you're into bearded dragons, you'll know that I have one of, probably one of the fanciest <laughs> uh, lizards you can have, in my opinion, but I could be a little bit biased. And just like I've mentioned, um, you know, in the past few days, because I have been using voiceover style, I won't talk the entire time. I will give you momentary pauses, you know, so you can sit back and watch watch each brush stroke. You know, I don't want to fill the entire thing with talk. And so, um, 
what you're seeing right there is a flat brush. It's a flat synthetic brush. Um, so I've noticed with water mixables, I think that... Uh, I, I see, I'm not an expert with water mixables, but I do think that they handle very nicely with synthetics. Whereas uh, traditional oils, I would much rather be using, um, you know, bristle brushes just because they can carry a lot more paint. But in any case, uh, I am pretty much enjoying uh, the experience of using a different medium. And what we're painting now are all of these subtle planes uh, for Pepper's beak, for her mouth, going all the way down towards her beard. Because bearded dragons do have that beard. And again, uh, the beard is very spiky, so there you see it now. Boom! That is the uh, magic trick that I was saying that I would do eventually. And now you can really see all of these exquisite colors that we're getting out of these uh, water mixable oil paints. And in the background, you can see the, the effects that we're getting uh, by using a little bit more water in the background. And I will say that I am not using any other medium other than the water mixable oil paint and just water. So that's all I'm using for this painting. And now we're going to be painting the arm. We are a little over the halfway point in today's episode. So uh, you're going to see me block in the arm in a very, very basic fashion. So there is the darkest accent. Now remember, an accent is an area where one form meets another form, thus blocking out most of the light. And you can definitely see it uh, right across Pepper's arm. And you know, even their arms, if their arms are too swollen, um, you know, if I paint her arm too swollen, like if she's a bodybuilder or something like that, that can also be a sign of poor health with bearded dragons. So, um... I'm very, very cautious with the dimensions of all of the, uh, you know, the, the body parts of my lizard. Um, I will share an experience with you that I, I'm, I'm really sad about. My first bearded dragon, um, Monet was his name. When I got him, he, uh, I didn't notice it at the time because he was my first bearded dragon. I didn't have as much experience. He had gout when he was very, very young. And unfortunately, um, when I took him to the vet, uh, they said that it was, he had to be put down. So one thing I noticed with him in his uh, baby pictures was that his arm, in particular, his forearm was wide. And I thought, in my mind, I thought maybe he's just really muscular, but no, that actually did take the life, unfortunately, of my first uh, my son Monet so it did it was a very sad experience for me um, that being said you know this is all about truth you know this is a daily painting show but I'm also sharing bits and pieces of my life with you my everyday life so uh, again that's why I'm really not trying to make her arms that big and you can tell in the photo reference her arms are pretty healthy and a very you know a very stout look if that's the correct word. Lean, I think lean is the word. And um, how about we insert question of the day now as I start to fill in some more shapes for the, uh, the arm. That is, do you keep any, any, uh, any reptiles? So are any of you, Owners of turtles, iguanas, amphibians, or, well, does that count? <laughs> How about this? Those of you that have pets, it's okay if you only have a cat or a dog or whatever like that. If you keep pets and you really love your pets, go ahead, comment down below. I'm not going to differentiate between any pets. Honestly, I love all animals. If you keep a single cat, Type down, my cat, so-and-so, I love my cat. If you keep one dog, a chihuahua, I love my chihuahua, so-and-so, named so-and-so. And yeah, let's keep that dialogue in the comments. So now you're seeing a very quick and simple block in of the fingers. And again, even the fingers need to be lean, very thin and lean. And you can see that, um, you know, the claws are very similar to that of, 
Uh, a lot of iguanas have claws that look like that. You know, you have parrots that also have claws that look very, very similar. It's pretty neat. And those are some pretty sharp nails that Pepper has. <laughs> very, very sharp. Now, as far as the technique is concerned with this painting, um, you know, the reason that I'm kind of spot rendering each area is because with the water mixables, um, I noticed yesterday, or I, I noticed in yesterday's video, um, you know, that the layering was actually really nice. Um, using actually a thinner layer first. Notice how, like, uh, you know, thin the paint is beneath uh, Pepper's uh, left arm. And that kind of thinness of the, uh, the paint starts to get sticky really quickly, like in a matter of minutes. Uh, and there you saw another magic trick. So um, once it gets sticky, I'm actually able to use a wet on wet approach uh, with the water mixable oil paints, which is kind of the reverse of traditional oil paints. Now again, I'm not an expert with water mixable oil paints. I would consider myself kind of an expert uh, in the terms of the handling of traditional oil paints. But now at this point, if I didn't tell you that I wasn't using uh, water mixables, I'm not sure if you would notice a difference, to be honest. Like I'm saying, uh, like I was saying about the technique. So what I'm doing is, see that right there? That's a very thin wash of the uh, ivory black and ultramarine blue. And what it does is it'll start to settle in. And then as it settles in, in a couple minutes, uh, that's my cue to go back in with another layer and then continue to build the layers in that kind of way. And after a couple hours, it does start to get kind of tacky. And when it gets tacky, just like oil paints, um, it's just that's the time to set it aside to let it dry. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a kind of uh, hatching approach. Remember hatching like in pencil is, you know, when you use the... Uh, the mark of the pencil in a particular angle to add an aesthetic to your drawing that you enjoy. I'm actually using the hatching of the brushstroke to help indicate the uh, the textures on Pepper's body. So notice there's a lot of spikes and things like that because uh, you know bearded dragons they have those kind of textures. There are some morphs of bearded dragons that don't have the spikes. But mine has the spikes, and um, so what I'm doing is applying the brushstroke in a zigzag direction, uh, kind of in the direction of each one of those like little little spikes and textures, and I'm letting it start off a little bit darker, see that? And then it starts to get lighter and lighter as I have less and less paint on the brush. And this is a very repetitive motion, so... It should be quite easy to follow. So here is one color, zigzag, 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 let go. Another zigzag, 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 release. Let's do that again. Zigzag, 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 release. And it's that simple. So I'm trying to apply the brush stroke in a direction such that it mimics the texture of the bearded dragons. Uh, you know, the bearded dragon's back. And we're also going to, we're not going to forget about that center line that I drew in because that center line is actually going to indicate the spine of the bearded dragon right there. So the spine is a very, uh, it's a very simple element to lose track of just because maybe it's because of the coloration of my bearded dragon, the orangey kind of tint. But just keep making sure that that center line is followed is a very, very important thing. And let me know what other kinds of uh, animal and pet portraits you would like me to do. I think I remember a while ago someone suggested a golden retriever. If I can get some images of a golden retriever that I can use, uh, that would be nice. You know, if you follow me on Instagram, you can uh, feel free to share the images with me on Instagram uh, of your pets or something like that. And... Um, I may or may not be able to get to painting from that image, but that would be pretty neat. And I'm using quite a bit of the, um, excuse me, I'm using quite a bit of the cadmium yellow in this area. I will say with the water mixables, however, 
the cadmium yellow it doesn't have the strength of should I say um, Grumbucker's cadmium yellow deep which is the one that I keep on my uh, you know my traditional oil paint palette but what I'm doing is I'm painting over top of a white surface so that the white can show through underneath and increase the depth of the color that's why I'm painting on white today and why I painted on white in yesterday's video zigzag zigzag I'm starting to put even more marks and we have just about five minutes or so left in today's episode so this is pretty much the uh, the style of the painting that I, I really enjoy and again I've been experimenting with these water mixables and with various different techniques as you know we've had the alla prima the traditional alla prima approach We've had the classical approach, and now I will admit that this one is a lot of fun. It's kind of a mix between all of them. And again, I'm not going to paint in every little, um, you know, every little spine or every little detail. Instead, I'm trying to put in the brush strokes in that zigzag type pattern to... Um, you know, to portray the the illusion of the bearded dragon's textures from a distance. And that's the effect I'm trying to get. Just like painting a portrait of a human being, it's important to, to uh, make the image look its best from maybe five feet away or six feet away or something like that. And now we're going to start to paint in the um, this little piece of wood. I will admit it is a fake piece of wood. So all of that is artificial and it just makes cleaning easier. You know when the when the reptile uh, uses the restroom on any of the things in the enclosure uh, I'm able to clean it very quickly just because it doesn't have like it's not real wood so it's not going to sink into it. It's just easier to clean. And another thing about Pepper, she's pretty much potty trained. <laughs> um, she gets a soaking uh, pretty much every day so she uh, she takes a little bath. Of course I don't submerge her in water or anything but um, she, she pretty much is potty trained. She'll go in in the water which is pretty awesome. And again forgive me for sharing uh, so much but that's what I want to do. I really want to share the experience. And um, that color mixture is pretty much ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. I really wanted to push the purplish kind of hue in the wood there. And now we have a little bit of a mix of our mixing white and the uh, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson mixture. And you can tell there's uh, quite a bit of water in the paints and it creates a really nice texture and now you're noticing it should be somewhat similar to that of a watercolor or maybe even an acrylic painting it's pretty neat and that's the burnt sienna burnt umber super simple combination there and at that point we're just going to be blending the edges together just to get the effect of this little piece of wood and this little piece of wood is actually really important for Pepper because she climbs it. Uh, so there's a higher part to it where she climbs to work out her muscles. And the lower part is her basking spot, which is where she's on right now. So she can thermoregulate. She also likes to sleep on it too. And um, now I'm starting to exaggerate kind of the pinkish colors. Uh, it's kind of like a muted pink. It's like a cadmium red, a little bit of our titanium white, and um, I think burnt sienna. And now I'm going to use my little magic trick. There you go. Now I painted the rest of the bottom just so that I didn't show so much repetition. And I'm just going to sign the painting, and then we're going to call it a day.
That being said, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. And remember, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And I'll be back again very soon. What do you think, Pepper? Did you like your portrait? Hmm? Did you like it? Did she like her portrait? I don't know. I hope she did.